What's up guys, it's Dawn Matter here, and today we are going to be reacting to Major Kill. So it's been a little bit since we've done a Major Kill video, probably about a month or so. I think the last one was on the uh, the Sharks, I can't remember the name of the guy, but he was like the, the one Space Marine who's like 11 or 12 feet tall. He's just absolutely massive, he's like twice the size of every other Space Marine. Um, but this one is, which Xenos does the Imperium tolerate? So obviously the... Uh, the Imperium, known for being highly xenophobic, uh, is is that even considered a pun? I don't know if that's a, if that's a pun. But uh, you know, they're they're xenophobic towards Xenos, um, and yeah, they don't really like most other races in the universe. In fact, I can't think of anyone they like at all, except kind of, sort of, have a little bit of respect for the Eridar. But they really don't like anyone else that I know of. But I'm also a new fan. I'm not very familiar with a lot of the uh, smaller, lesser talked about races. Uh, so, you know, maybe we'll learn about this here. So, anyway, link to the original video down below. And again, this is Major Kills. Which Xenos does the Imperium tolerate Warhammer 40k lore? Let's jump into it. Dark Elder and Tyranids are a thing does make being an overt racist in Warhammer a bit of a vibe. <laughs> a bit of a vibe. Of in more imperial quotes like, hate the Xenos like you'd hate the infidel. Do not ask why kill the alien, ask why not. And he who allows the alien to live shares its crime of existence. The point I'm trying to make is that there seems to be a very low bar of tolerance for these non-human organisms. So it might come as quite a shocker that the Imperium still tolerates, shelters, and even relies on various Xenos. Many of these aliens have since perished because all it takes is one uppity bigoted inquisitor with a big red button to make them go kaput, but there is still a number that exists today. Also, shout out to Ryan for winning the Schmalgen car canvas auction, which is now ended. That looks really I'm cool. I'm going to leave up the option to buy the smaller canvas version for another week, so if you want to pick that up before it's gone forever, then now's your chance. All proceeds are going to go to the original artist, Nicholas. Another fun fact, my birthday is in four days. 14th of September, which, yes I know, it means I am the spawn of a drunken New Year's evening. Despite this being the second birthday in a row that I'll spend in lockdown, we can still have a bit of fun. So I'll be doing a birthday stream, where I'll be playing the unreleased pre-alpha of the upcoming Warhammer Fantasy Bannerlord mod, which looks incredible. The Mad Lads even figured out how to add magic to the game. But yeah, beers, Birthday and Bannerlord. Seems like a pretty fucking sweet way to turn 23. Today we'll talk about each of the Xeno factions that have been aligned with the Imperium at some point, focusing on their interaction with mankind and why the usually hateful humanity tolerated them. We'll also include species that are extinct or no longer friends with the Imperium, but we won't be including abhumans such as squats or those weird fairy people that should just not exist in the slightest. Let's get into it. They have furries in 40k. Why? What, what, how do furries infiltrate everything, man? I swear to God. I swear. Furries, they're everywhere. They infiltrate everything. You can't escape them. They're, they're in Warcraft. They're in Warhammer. Goddamn furries. The first Xeno that the Imperium is chill with... What the hell are these things? ...so damn cute is the Jokaro. Who are Never heard of them. ...who are orangutans that can forge mastercrafted weapons from very little material. Imagine Tony Stark in a cave full of scraps, except that he's a hairy ginger and was dropped as a child. <laughs> they don't speak and do not seemingly respond to direct orders. They just kind of suss out the situation and will make weapons and gadgets as needed. It's not uncommon to find a Jokero in an Inquisitor's retinue. They will be constantly tinkering with shit. Sometimes they'll modify some armor to make it look cooler, and then sometimes they'll modify a ring to make it capable of firing mini nukes. You really just don't know what you're going to get with these primates. As they were created by the Old Ones during the War in Heaven as a sort of law okay. mechanic, they are engineered to be loyal to creations of the Old Ones. As humanity is a spawn of the Old Ones, but major kill, that's heresy. Fuck off, Timmy. Your existence is heresy. As hum So is that, uh, obviously, you know, uh, is that actually true? Like, how are they spawns of the Old Ones? Like, the Old Ones create them? Or are they the descendants of the Old Ones? It's kind of like a Halo thing. Um, I guess they've retconned the Halo lore so many times now. Like at one point, the you know it, during the Halo lore, the 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 forerunners and humans were the same thing, and then they kind of retconned it, and then you know the forerunners and the humans knew each other and fought against each other, and then, yeah. So like, what kind of situation are we talking about here? I had not heard that. I had no idea that the 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 humans related to the old ones in any way. 
humanity is a spawn of the old ones, it makes sense that the Jakero would be pretty chill about lending us a helping hand here and there. I cannot emphasize enough how awesome the technology that these guys can create is. The starships, weaponry and artifacts they can create on the fly often genuinely shit on the best stuff the Elder or even the Necrons have. Probably easy to see why the Imperium is so willing to tolerate them. The only reason why they only seem to be hanging out with Inquisitors is the fact that they're incredibly difficult to capture, even more difficult to contain and almost impossible to enlist the direct aid of. Like it's common for them to pop in, modify your ship for a laugh then leave, but to actually have them follow you and serve you out of their own free will is not common at all. This next Xeno is incredibly niche and has barely been mentioned at all in the lore, which is a fucking good thing I'm here then eh? The Biovore. This Xeno race used to be used as sex slaves or some shit by the Uvrath, who were similar to those orb things from Astartes. Due to it looks like a cow otter. ...controlled and kind of damaged by their oppressive Xeno overlords, by the time mankind clapped most of the Uvrath's cheeks and inadvertently liberated the Biovore, the Biovore were little more than sentient cows. Now we do give a lot of shit to the Inquisition for being massive dicks, but credit where credit is due. They saw the Biovores and they were like, Mmm, give me that space bovine titty milk. And they declared the Biovores as a protected species. Wait, <laughs> well, is, is this... When did he really... This, this is not... He's, this is September, right? This is not an April Fool's joke. This is a real species in Warhammer. Who the f... They took cows as sex slaves? What the fuck? What the fuck? Is this supposed to be like some joke about like how aliens always abduct cows? What the... This furry shit, I swear to God. In the current setting, the Biovores work as mercenaries for the Imperium around the Calixis sector. By mercenary, I basically mean that they just let guardsmen suckle in their teats and in return they get to live. This next Xeno will look familiar. No, that is not a fucking Jawa from Star Wars. That is a Watcher in the Dark. Out of all the Xenos that work with the Imperium, these guys are by far the most powerful and unsettling. They seem to have some kind of fourth dimensional perspective of the universe and they're able to experience the past, present and future simultaneously. Like they straight up knew about the Horus Heresy in detail thousands of years before it would occur, giving them foresight well beyond that of even the Emperor. If anything, it kind of proves my point that the Lion and the Dark Angels are the best legion in the galaxy if they're the ones who have been exclusively guided by some omnipresent cloaked looking gods. Yeah, no shit. Around, these dudes would tell him about shit going down on Caliban and that he should sort it out. And they often hang out with other important dark angels in the current setting. When the Changeling, one of the most powerful demons in existence, was running through the rock on a quest to completely fuck over the dark angels, he stopped and completely shat himself when he saw a watcher in the dark. The scene was actually quite chilling. To the demon, the watcher appeared like some kind of void, like a blank, but watchers aren't blanks as they can communicate psychically. Either way, the changeling ran in the other direction and they did not look back. It was the watchers who put the lion into a coma and it will be the watchers who wake him up when the time is right. Moral of the story is don't fuck with the watchers. They've been here since the dawn of time and probably aren't even from this universe. The Biovore aren't the only Xeno mercenary the Imperium employs. They also have the Crute. Unlike the lactating appeal of the Biovore, I've never heard of any of these. The Crute are powerful warriors, bigger, faster and stronger than humans. They can also consume flesh to harvest the DNA within. If enough DNA is consumed from enough powerful foes, a Crute's physical form will evolve into something more powerful. If a Crute eats enough orcs, they'll become Larry Wheels. If they eat enough flying creatures, mm. they'll grow wings. And if they eat enough priests, they'll start molesting children. Oh my god. Happen to be mercenaries as it means they get to see more of the galaxy, hence get to feast on a wider variety of species. Usually they work with the Tau, as the Tau are quite happy to hang out with other Xenos, but they won't turn down an offer from the Imperium. I used to think the Crute were like, kinda cute and funny, but then I read a short story about them ambushing some Eldar Rangers, and holy fuck it was horrifying. Some Eldar Ranger chick watches as her sister is violently consumed and eaten alive, before she too is torn to shreds. Don't fuck with the Crute. Another Xeno mercenary that the Imperium do work with, but only on rare occasions, are the Demigurg, who was supposed to replace the Squats, but then the Squats remain canon, so the Demigurg had to kind of become their own thing. Now they just- I've literally never heard of any of these. Now, again, I, I've said, I said this right at the start of the video, I'm not very familiar with Warhammer 40k lore. Uh, pretty much the videos on my channel are all I have seen of it. Never heard of any of these guys.
literally never heard of any of them, which is kind of funny because like you hear about how the Imperium Man hates all Xenos, and then it's just like, oh yeah, they like these guys, they like these guys, they like these guys, they like these guys. I didn't even know these guys existed. They just look like the satanic spawn of a midget and a smurf. The Demiurge are a spacefaring race who preferred trading goods over... They look like they're made out of rock. Appeal. In saying that though, they can make some pretty fucking nifty pew pew guns, and they were the ones who taught the Tau how to make their own overpowered iron cannons. They will almost never be the aggressor, but if you shoot them, they will shoot you back a lot harder. However, combat between mankind and these, uh, little men is super rare, as the Demiurge will only enter Imperial space if they've been invited in. Very respectful chaps. The Imperium has time and time again teamed up with most of the other non tyrannid or demonic races in the galaxy. The Elder and the Imperium have worked together numerous times, even before Gilliman started destroying Uvrain's gash. The Crawford Kaola is given an Imperial escort whenever it needs to pass through Imperial space, and Crawford Ulthwe and the Navigator House Belsarius have a close alliance with each other. Like Ulthwe once saved Belisarius from annihilation, and in return, Belisarius gave Ulthwe seven coins. When a coin is redeemed, Belisarius must commit all of their resources and power to aid Ulthwe with whatever they need. The Harlequins have also worked with and even allowed certain Inquisitors to access the Black Library, which is probably the greatest honour that an Elder can bestow upon another, especially since most Elder aren't even allowed near the Black Library at all. Funnily enough, the Imperium and the Orcs have teamed up on numerous occasions. Okay, so I, I, I did know that the Imperium and the Eldar had, you know, worked together before. I, if I'm not mistaken, there was actually one Eldar who was actually, you know, kind of friends with the Emperor of Mankind before he went into his you know, chair coma situation. Um, the orcs, though, that... I gotta hear this. This is just fascinating. The orcs working with humans? Whenever both sides are fighting and the Tyranids rock up, they'll generally work together to squash some bugs. However, often Fair when they're gone, they'll just resume their battle. Yeah. I'm saying that, though, there is an orc clan, the Blood Axes, who offer their strength as mercenaries for hire. Hence, when times are tough, it's not uncommon for the Imperium to employ Orc mercenaries to get the job done. It's also implied that when the Great Rift opened and fucking ruined everything, the Orcs and humans on Armageddon signed a truce so they could deal with the random fuck huge demonic invasion that had come to ruin their fun. Maybe even more shocking is that the Imperium has worked with the Necrons a couple times. The first instance was the Blood Angels fighting alongside the Silent King to wipe out some Tyranids. This oh, one I kind of knew about. Ever. Tras in the Infinite has unintentionally saved countless human lives on numerous occasions. One time the orcs attacked a human world that held a sacred Necron tomb on it that Trezin wanted to save, so he deployed his army and he helped defeat the orcs, hence saving the humans. In return, the humans of that world erected a statue in his honor, as well as created stained glass windows depicting him. In a similar vein, Trezin tried to stop the fall of Cadia by unleashing a fuckload of his Imperial Pokémon. To help mankind, he unleashed a ton of pre-heresy space marines, as well as a custodian that he had in one of his collections. <laughs> I, I didn't know about that. I knew he was on Cadia because he helped activate the pylons. We just found that out in like literally the last video I reacted to. Um, but the fact that he had like pre-heresy space marines locked up in his little pokeballs because he's collecting all this shit, that is so funny. ...the Necron pylons, so Necron and Imperial cooperation is a big thing even if it is extremely heretical. And yes, the Imperium has worked with the Tau. Even though the two factions are currently in a bit of a cold war at the moment, they both understand that neither of them are the true evil in the galaxy. They will happily team up whenever Tyranids are involved, and various members of the Inquisition are mates with some of the Tau. Sure, it might just be because of, uh, Tau propaganda, but Fred oh God. Is born out of any situation. Oh yeah, and I guess the Captain General of the Custodes fucked the ever-living shit out of Commander Shadow Sun, which technically counts as working together. If you enjoyed the video and you that want actually, to the channel, then Patreon is the... Is, did that actually happen, or is that just like some fan rule 34 type shit? ...place to be. Only one dollar per month give you access to a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe... Degeneracy. Degeneracy. Man. Uh, honestly, uh, well, I hadn't heard of most of these races at the start. Uh, you know, like, most of the races they talked about at the start, I had no idea they even existed. The Eridar, I did know that they worked with. The Orcs, I didn't, like, I'm obviously familiar with the Orcs and the Necron. Uh, I, I was familiar that they had worked with the Necron before, uh, just on Cadia, um, from that previous video that I just watched. Uh, but I had no idea 
that they had ever worked with the orcs. I guess everyone hates the Tyranids and the demons more than they hate each other when push comes to shove. But, you know, um, <laughs> Buddy showing up and, like, you know, having all these, like, pre-heresy space marines, these, like, captured in his little Pokeballs or whatever they they call them. That That's pretty funny. Uh, but, yeah, the bovine people, like, what? The orangutans are pretty cool. The bo uh, Oh, yeah, with the orangutan, what was that about the, uh, you know, humans being descendants of the old ones or what, or creations of the old ones or what's going on there? Somebody care to explain that to me? Anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.